Yachty, tell him what you was going to tell him. Yachty, tell him what you wanted to say. What do you want to tell him? Go ahead. They're waiting. Well, he wanted to say, watch till the end of the video because we're going to share some cuteness cat videos. Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. Today, I'm sharing some super cute and really easy to make farmhouse DIYs. And if you enjoy my little fur babies, if you wait till the end of the video, I'll show you a nice little clip that I got of them. For the first farmhouse DIY, I went to Hobby Lobby and I picked up this nice piece of wood and it was 40 or 50% off, I can't remember. And this is the back side, and I'm gonna start painting with the back side first, and I'm using Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Snow. And I've just recently realized that I believe I like the Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint better than the Waverly. First of all, they come in a great big can. They're easier to get a brush dipped into. And another reason is because I think it distresses better. Now I don't do any distressing on this wood piece. <laughs> I liked the clean look of it, you'll see in the end. But um, I just wanted to share with you, I think I like Rust-Oleum better. Do you have a chalk paint that is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. After the back side was dry, I flipped it and painted the front side. And I also wanted to say that you don't have to make a trip to Hobby Lobby. If you have a regular chunk of wood at home, you can do this DIY with whatever scrap wood you have. Another thing that's optional with this DIY is you can either leave this as one big decoration or cut this in half and have two smaller decorations. The next thing you'll need is some sort of material with a grain sack stripe on it. I just love grain sack stripes. So it's going to make a pocket on the front side of this board. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Now you'll see a lot of people that make this sort of project will wrap their piece of material completely all the way around to the back side of the board. And that's certainly the easier way to go and you can do that but I wanted to make a really distinct pocket on the front. So I'm going to cut my piece of material into a little rectangle shape that would fit just on the front side of the board. And I'm going to hot glue my edges like they're hemmed. So you see here how it's going to fit on the top of the board and now I'm going to fold in all of my edges except for the top I left the hem on the top I didn't cut that off and I'm going to hot glue them down to the board I started with the bottom edge and also remember to leave enough on your sides like cut your material big enough so that it's wider than the board that allows for you to fold these under and glue them to the board so it'll be nice and finished. I got these really nice tulips. They are super cute. They are kind of the rubbery, not just the silk flower. They're not made of that stuff. They're kind of a rubbery plastic material. But I got them at Burlington for $6.00. For the whole bunch so i'm only using four of them i'm going to use some of them for other diys later and i just tuck them down into my pocket and then i remembered i need to put a hanger on the back so i took the tulips back out and i installed a hanger on the back side so this can hang on the wall but for video purposes i just have it on top of my cabinet with my other decorations
for DIY number two, I'm using this little tiny tobacco basket that was also from Hobby Lobby and it was in the spring shop. So it was 40% off. And these cute little utensils are from the Dollar Tree. They had some of these at Hobby Lobby and they were in my cart. I almost bought them. They were black and they fit this tobacco basket perfect and then i remembered that dollar tree has these so i was able to save some money there the only trouble is dollar tree didn't have black ones like hobby lobby did and i wanted these definitely to be black so and these may look black but they're really navy blue <laughs> i remedied that situation by just painting them with some black acrylic craft paint and you wouldn't even know that they ever were navy blue it worked out perfect and then I took the utensils and I crisscrossed them on top of the basket. And you see me gluing them to the basket and to each other using hot glue, but that did not hold. When I went to move these later in my kitchen, <laughs> they fell right off. So no go on the hot glue for this project. Use something stronger like E6000 or some sort of Gorilla Glue something better than hot glue because it just doesn't hold on these painted utensils now what you can use hot glue for is some greenery and these are just some little pieces from my greenery stash and i cut them down and i will use hot glue on those to attach them to the basket sort of behind the utensils and that holds well so you're good on that that hot glue was deceiving because it seemed like it was going to hold okay, but no, they fell off later. So learn from me and use some heavier duty glue first. The next farmhouse DIY is using this enamelware pot that I thrifted for only a couple bucks at a junk store. And I love the shape of this one and that it has two handles. So I'm going to turn it into a planter pot. And so I'll be starting with some floral foam in the bottom from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cover the floral foam with some moss. But I really had on my mind I wanted some dirt. And I wish I could have just went outside and got some real dirt. Because I think that would have looked really neat. Because it's not just any flowers that I'm going to use in this planter pot. It's going to be herbs. And I wanted them to look like they were coming up out of dirt. And so if you have something that can be used as dirt or if you have dirt or potting soil would be great then i would probably go for that but for what i had on hand i'm just going with the moss and here's the greenery that i'm calling herbs now you could absolutely plant real herbs and if you have a green thumb you go right for that everything i plant dies so i have to use fake and I sort of thought that these ones from the Dollar Tree looked like thyme. I looked up pictures of thyme and I thought that it looked a lot like thyme. So I just planted them right down in my pot into the floral foam so that they were nice and secure. And then I'm using one of those chalkboard uh, planner pick things from the Dollar Tree and a white paint pen to write the word thyme so that everyone knows what this fake plant is supposed to be and oh my gosh I just love it so much that I'm keeping this one
And nothing says farmhouse like a basket of eggs. So here are some eggs that are just crafting eggs. They're not real, but I would encourage you to do this DIY with real eggs, preferably real country eggs that are brown. But I don't have any brown country eggs, so I'm going to paint some of my eggs. So I'll have some white and some brown. And the only way I could think to do that would be to water down a little bit of brown paint and just paint it on. And then I kind of wiped it back away, hoping that it would make it look more natural and not like painted eggs. They wound up a little bit splotchy, but as I've seen before in the past, some country eggs are splotchy. So I think they look pretty natural. Now the technique that I'm really here to show you is the stamping of the eggs. I don't know if you have bought any country eggs from anyone in a while, but some people have begun stamping their eggs and they have personalized stamps made with whatever they want their little eggs to say. But I just bought this stamp at Hobby Lobby. It was $2.99, it had a little chicken on it and I already had my ink, but you can pick that up at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or any craft store. And oh my gosh, how it elevates these little eggs. I loved stamping these eggs. And I want to stamp all of my eggs that come in my house. So when I open up my refrigerator and see my little eggs sitting there, how adorable would that be? And I wound up with a headless chicken. I had to go back and try to stamp his head on, but turned out okay. <laughs> And the basket that I'm using for my eggs is a thrifted one. It was only $1. And I also decided that I wanted it to have some sort of a little linen or a tea towel, something inside the basket. So I looked and found a tea towel that I stamped last year in a spring video. And I'm going to use that with this DIY. If you wanna see how I stamped this tea towel, then down in my description box below, I will link that video. And I think that was, that was a really cute video. That had a lot of cute spring ideas. So definitely watch that video that I have linked, or I will also link it at the end of this video too. This one is more of a hack than a DIY. It is a way to hang some pretty plates on your wall if you don't have a plate hanger. This is a Pioneer Woman plate. I thrifted at a junk store for only a dollar. And here's what we're going to use to hang it. It is a tab off of one of my cat food cans, but you also could use a soda can tab. And here we go again with the hot glue. I hot glued this tab onto the back of the plate thinking that it would hold, but it did not. However, what it did do was it provided a really nice flat surface, <laughs> a little glue dot surface on the back of this tab so that when I did have to go back and use some super glue fix all adhesive, you could use E6000 or your glue of preference it provided a place to put that runny glue and let it set overnight so that it was really secure. But with the right glue, you can see this hack works very well. The next farmhouse DIY is actually something that I wanted to make to go along with the first DIY, which was the wall pocket with the tulips. So I'm going to make a little sign for my tulips. This is a Dollar Tree fake wood frame and I've already taken everything out of it so that I can paint it up with some white chalk paint. After the chalk paint dried, I wanted to do some wet distressing and here's what I was talking about earlier, why I prefer Rust-Oleum chalk paint to Waverly because the wet distressing works really well with the Rust-Oleum chalk paint. But as you can see, I'm having a little trouble getting this Waverly paint to wet distress off of this plastic. 
Now, I don't know if it is the material that this frame is made out of that's making it more difficult or or really what the issue is, but I'm having to press and rub pretty hard and it just wasn't like that with Rust-Oleum. So I think I'm going to go back to using Rust-Oleum chalk paint next time I have to use white chalk paint. I eventually did get somewhat of a distressed look and if you're new to wet distressing, it's really simple. I just had a wet paper towel and you just rub that over the chalk paint and it takes away some of the chalk paint down to your base color, which was just that plastic, brown plastic. So, and then I dried it all up and ready to move on. The next thing I did was use the glass out of the picture frame to trace around a piece of card stock so that I can make my own design to go in the frame. And I cut it out. Now I'm gonna do some more stamping. I've got my letter stamps and I have a clear piece of plastic that I'm gonna arrange them on to spell the word tulips. I pressed my stamps into some black ink and now I'm going to press that onto my paper that's going in the frame. I don't have any number stamps, so I'm using some rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. If you have pretty handwriting, you could just use a black Sharpie and write your number. I'm going to go with 10 cents. It's gonna cost 10 cents to buy one of my tulips. <laughs> I did have to handwrite the symbol for cents on my sign, so that's the only thing hand drawn here. And the more I looked at them, the more I thought I should use some more of those rub-on transfers on my little sign. So I cut out some of the little flowery doodads. I wish there would have been some tulips on there. Wouldn't that have been perfect? And the last thing I'll do with this sign is distress the edges using my ink pad. So I just very gently, lightly just rub the edge of the paper against that ink pad or rub the ink pad on the paper, <laughs> whichever way and get some little distressing marks and I think that gives more character to the picture. Then replace everything all back into the frame and this DIY is done. Now, as promised, it's time for a cute cat video. Thanks for watching everyone. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider hitting that button. I would love to have you join my crafty family. And here's the link for the video where I stamped the tea towel. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time. Bye.